Hi, I'm Ranger Kristen with Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. I'm an interpretive naturalist ranger here in the Parks Department. And one of the fun things that I get to do is take people out to explore the tide pools. So today we're going to talk about tide pooling and what you can expect if you're going to come out here and explore the tide pools either with or without a ranger. Before we take off, we want to make sure that we're being safe for ourselves. We already know the tides. That's something you always want to check in advance before you come out so you know you don't have to worry about being caught by the tides. The best way to do it is come out before low tide, make your way all the way out as far as you're comfortable going, and then make your way slowly, leisurely back, exploring as you go. So that way you're not going to be caught by the tides. We've all got our tide charts, we've all got our boots and our tennis shoes on. We've all got rain jackets on, which is important. We're dressing in layers because you never know what the weather's going to do here on the coast. Even when the weather report for the town nearby says sunny and 70 degrees, it can be cold and drippy here. So it's important to make sure you're aware of that and that you dress in layers and are prepared for what we're going out to do. So we are coming out here to explore the tide pools. So let's talk a little bit about what a tide pool is. Tide pools are areas right at the edge of the land where the ocean and the land meet. Now here in Oregon, we usually have four tides a day, two high and two low. So the high tide comes in and covers up the land and then it is pulled out and it goes way far out on low minus tides like today and you can come explore these wet rocks and pools that are left behind. You can go meet ocean animals and have an adventure on the bottom of the ocean in the tide pools. If you check your tide chart, you can look at it and find a day like this morning when the tide is going to be really low and you can get out there into the low areas because the tide pools are made up of zones and the coolest stuff, the stuff that's least like anything you would see on land, is in the low zones, the parts that are underwater for most of the day. So you might wonder, where do tides come from? That's a good question. Tides are caused by the pull of gravity on the earth by the moon. So at certain times of the month, like right now, the moon and the sun and the earth are aligned just right so that the moon pulls really strongly on the water and causes really low tides. That's why we have minus tides today and that is the best time to go tide pooling. So, Let's talk a little bit about the tide pools themselves. We know that there are places of water left in the rocks when the tide has gone out. What kinds of things live in the tide pools? Crabs. What else? Sea stars. Sea stars. Good job. That's what we're going to call them today. We're being scientists. So even though we all grew up calling them starfish, are they a fish? Do they have fins? Do they have bones? No, so we're going to call them sea stars. Crabs, sea stars, anemones. And look out there over those rocks. Our tide pools are covered in seaweed. So this is an example of one of the kinds of seaweed that lives just off the edge of the tide pools. But look how slimy and sticky and slippery it is. Do you think this would be fun to step on? No, this is dangerous to step on, so we're going to be really careful where we go. Because if you put this down, your foot's going to go whoo out from underneath you. So, where do you think the best place to step might be? Away from the seaweed. So we're going to step on bare rock as much as possible. So that's going to protect us because we're not going to step on slimy, slippery seaweed. 
and it's also going to protect the creatures that live out there, those crabs, those sea stars, the anemones, the really cool things that we can find in the tide pools. Because the tide pools are an amazing place. It's incredibly harsh. There's waves smashing on them multiple times a day. Part of the time they're under the water, part of the time they're out in the air. They've got predators trying to eat them. They have different levels of temperature and salt. I wouldn't be able to live there, would you? No, but these animals are perfectly adapted to it. They live here quite happily. But one thing they're not adapted to is our feet. So we're gonna be very careful where we step. There are soft, squishy things that if we poke them too much or step on them, they'll lose all their water and dry up and they could die. There are hard, crunchy things that even though they might seem like good traction, can be scraped off or broken by our feet. So we wanna be extra careful where we step to protect these animals. Another thing it's important to watch out for when you're going out to an area is knowing the rules of the area. Here at South Cove, and actually all of these parks areas, this is a protected wildlife place. It's called a marine research reserve. So the land is protected for scientists studying. So you can take all the pictures and all the memories you want, but we ask you please leave the animals and everything else as you found it. If you want to pick up something that's loose, like a crab, we ask you to do it very gently, carefully. Use two hands cupped and hold them down really low because I've seen it too many times. Somebody finds something awesome and goes, look, look what I found, and the crab goes, whoo, onto the rocks. So, we're gonna have fun exploring the bottom of the ocean. We're gonna get out there into these low tide zones, and we're gonna see what cool sea creatures we can see today. But we're gonna do it safely, and we're gonna have fun. So let's head over towards our tide pools, and we are going to look at Ranger Kristen's favorite rock, and then we're going to start exploring. Sound good? Let's go! What's one animal out here? Yeah? There's an anemone. Anemones, exactly. These green blobby things are anemones. And these are a special kind that grows up high on these rocks. And if you look out on these other rocks, they're coating them all in colonies. Because these are aggregating anemones. And in order to reproduce, they split themselves in half. So they form huge clusters all over the rocks. This is called the gumboot chitin. So the chitin is a giant marine snail. So underneath here is its squishy soft foot. Chitons are kind of like the deer or the cow of the tide pool. They're the giant grazer. They just stick on the rocks and climb really, really slowly, slug around, eating algae. They are kind of snail, but instead of having a twisty snail shell like we're used to, they have eight overlapping plates. So they look kind of like an armadillo or a pill bug stuck on the rock. So this one, we can't see those plates because it's covered up by this reddish brown leathery mantle. All chitons have that mantle that grows around their shells to hold them all together. But this one and a couple other kinds of chitons, the mantle grows on top of the shell and covers them completely. So that feels soft and kind of fuzzy and bumpy, right? Do you think you would have noticed this if I hadn't pointed it out? Sometimes they camouflage really well and can look just like a rock. So this one's curling itself up now. Those overlapping plates allow it to curl up like a potato bug, protect itself. So these are our common urchins out here in our tide pools, the purple urchin. Now in some places, urchins will sting you or pinch you or bite you. But in Oregon, the urchins will give you a hug. 
If you put your finger in between the spines, they will actually move their spines together to sort of feel you and hug you. So this one's dead, so it's not actually going to do it. Sorry! And that's the only reason we could pick this up, because urchins are related to sea stars, so they have all those tube feet that they suck onto the rocks really well with. So we're going to see some more urchins later, and we'll be able to touch some. Don't worry about it. But this is what a purple urchin looks like. This is called the test of the urchin. So that's the skeleton that's left over after an urchin has died. All these spines fall off. Each bump is a place where a spine attaches. So these are really cool shells, but we're going to leave them here so that they can go back into the nature cycle and so that other things can use them. These urchin caves are a really great habitat for a lot of animals. These lined chitons and other small invertebrates will live down here, tucked up under the urchin's spines, nicely protected. So this is one of those examples of how you got to get down close and start exploring and you'll see a bunch of really cool things living all together in a community in our tide pools. So we've seen a bunch of things all living together in these little holes. This area is a really great example of how diverse the tide pools are. There's creatures living on top of creatures and underneath other creatures and all living together in this space on the rocks.